Hey everybody, it's Chris here and I'm going to be uh, doing a virtual field trip with you all. I had planned to do this while we were still in school, but unfortunately we are not there at this current time, but we're going to make the most of this online learning situation. So I hope that you all enjoy this as we go along. So today we're going to be looking at an online exhibit uh, prepared by the North Carolina Museum of History. This exhibit is called The Shape of Fashion and it goes over a bunch of different styles that women wore from the 1700s all the way through the 1900s, covering about 200 years worth of history in women's fashion. We're not going to be looking at every part of this exhibit, but I will include the link if you're interested in doing that on your own. So next, we're going to be reading the description of this exhibit. So here we have the museum's description of what the exhibit is about. Let's read it together. Adore it or wouldn't be caught dead in it. For centuries, women have squeezed, padded, and puffed up their bodies to fit different shapes or silhouettes that were fashionable. From massive sleeves to enormous backsides, from wide bell-shaped skirts to straight and narrow shifts, the look of the, move of the moment has always been in flux, changing along with the societal roles and norms. The shape of fashion explores how these fashionable silhouettes changed over time, particularly in women's clothing, by introducing visitors to ten very different looks from the 1800s and 1900s. The exhibit featured more than a dozen period garments that were once worn by North Carolina women, men, and children, as well as many photographs or of additional pieces in the museum collection. So we're not going to be looking at all of these different outfits. It said that there is 10 very different looks, but I have picked out four different looks for us to read through together and look at. The first style that we're going to be looking at today is the column look from the late 1790s to the mid 1820s. So here it says, your own personal Greek statue. Big changes in society can lead to big changes in fashion. After decades of artificially wide hips and tightly laced torsos, a major shift begins to occur at the end of the 1700s. Americans, believing their newly formed government embodies the ideals of ancient Greek democracy and the Roman Republic, embrace a fashion for Greco-Roman decorative arts. Even women's clothing begins to mimic the flowing robes of ancient statuary. So here you can see a picture of the dress, which is a nice long blue dress, and it, and it says, Phoebe Caroline Jones Patterson of Caldwell County wore this deep blue silk empire waist dress with detachable long sleeves in the early to mid 1820s. Next, we're going to be looking at the bell style, otherwise known as the crinoline style, and which was used from about the late 1840s through the mid 1860s. And the title here is Ring My Bells. Sometimes, technological innovation gives fashion a helping hand. As skirts grow larger and larger in the 1840s and 1850s, their fullness must be supported by multiple layers of petticoats or, eventually, crinolines stiffer, stronger petticoats, often made with horsehair. A patent for the steel wire cage crinoline or hoop skirt is granted in 1856. By eliminating the need for multiple layers, this innovation offers women a relatively lightweight way to support even larger skirts. And here you can see this picture of this absolutely massive dress. And it says, Mary Eliza Battle Dancy of Edgecombe County wore this wide skirted pink ball gown sometime in the late 1850s through the early 1860s. Next, we're going to jump ahead quite a bit of time all the way up until the 1920s. Here we have the flapper look. The title is Keep It Short and Straight. Significant cultural changes often inspire new fashions. The tubular silhouette that emerges after World War I is something entirely new for the quickly evolving modern world. Curves and frills are out, and a slim, androgynous, youthful look is in. While many women still wear corsets, their purpose is now to flatten and smooth the body, not cinch the waist or enhance the bust or hips. This straight-sided look offers freedom of movement and de-emphasizes the traditional female shape just as women are taking on new roles in society and gaining the right to vote. As you can see here, this is a very plain dress and very straight and simple compared to the last ones that we've seen. And it says about this dress in the picture, Elizabeth Bridgers Daniels of Raleigh likely wore this pale green beaded silk Georgette straight-sided gown in the mid-1920s. 
Now we have yet another very different look. This is the military uniform look from the 1940s. And the title is, You're in the Army Now. World War II plays a significant role in dictating women's fashion in the 1940s. The look of the moment is inspired by military uniforms with nippled in waists and shoulder pads that create broad shoulders. Many women's suits differ from female military uniforms only in color and in minimal decorative elements. Fabric rationing restricts the amount of fabric available for outfits and also affects style, especially by raising hemlines. Here you can see a picture of a red uh, outfit from this time. It says about it, Anne Poolcox of Raleigh wore this garbadine wool suit with shoulder pads as her going away outfit following her August 26, 1949 marriage to Rolf Cox. On the online exhibit, they also included a section that explains why they chose to focus on women. So here you can see the title, Why Did We Focus on Women? For most of North Carolina's history, women's clothing has experienced more exaggerated changes in shape and style than men's clothing. Wealthy women usually led fashion changes, with working women adapting those new looks, usually with less expensive fabrics and designs that allowed for easier movement. Until the mid-1900s, each historical moment tended to only have one easily identified main look. Today, many different silhouettes are often popular at once. So now I have prepared some activities that go along with this video. So first, you're gonna type up some responses to these questions using two or more sentences. You can do this by typing, using voice to text, or whatever. I would just like you to try and be an accurate, to be as accurate as possible. So first, the questions. Number one, which style of clothing discussed in the video was your favorite? Why? So you could talk about if you like the way it looked, if it looked comfortable to wear, just many different things like that. Number two, which style of clothing was your least favorite? Why? It's pretty much just the opposite of number one. Just think through the question. And then number three, do people wear any of these clothing styles around today? So this could be people that you see on TV, people that you see in your everyday life, and just think if you have seen these clothes around or if they just belong in a museum. And then finally, there's an optional activity that you can do. If you would like, you can draw a picture of yourself wearing one of the clothing styles shown in the video. There won't be a place to submit this directly on this assignment, but I still very much encourage you to do this. It'd be very fun to do. I hope that you enjoy, and if you have any questions, just let me know. I hope that you all enjoyed this virtual field trip that I prepared for you. I'll, I have more activities that, can, that go along with this, but this is all I'm expecting you to do for right now. I hope that you're all stay, staying safe and having fun while you guys are stuck at home during this uncertain time. If you want to reach out, feel free to do so, but I am glad to still be here teaching you guys. Thank you. Bye.